All right, greetings. This is going to be part two of election. Does God have a chosen people or whosoever will? Turn your Bibles to Matthew 20 and verse 16. The number, uh, number one study, part one, was a lot of Old Testament. Well, now we're going to read mostly New Testament. Matthew 20, verse 16. So the last shall be first, and the first last. For many be called, but few chosen. Hmm, many are called, but few are chosen? How about Matthew 24, verses 22, 23, and 24? Talking about the time of Jacob's trouble, the great tribulation. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, E-L-E-C-T apostrophe S, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the whosoever will? No. They shall deceive the very elect, if it were possible. Hmm. How about an alternate reading? Mark 13, verses 20, 22, 27, blah, blah, blah. And except that the Lord hath shortened those days, no flesh should be saved, but for the elect's sake, whom he hath chosen, he hath shortened the days. For false cries and false prophets shall rise and shall show signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. And then shall he send his angels and gather together his elect, his elect, and shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. Let's go to Luke chapter 8. Very, very interesting things. Luke has to say. All right, let's read Luke chapter 8. I guess we'll start in verse 1. May as well. And it came to pass afterward that he, Jesus, that he went throughout every city and village, preaching and showing the glad tiding of the kingdom of God, and the twelve were with him. And certain women, which had been healed of even evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils. And Joanna, the wife of Chuzu, Herod Stuart, and Susanna, and many others, which ministered unto him of their substance. And when much people were gathered together and were come to him out of every city, he spake by a parable. So what's a, what's a parable? It's just a story with a earthly application that has a spiritual or heavenly meaning. A sower went out to sow his seed. You know, any farmer knows what that means. You know, farmer sows seeds into the ground. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. And some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns, and thor the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. And other fell on good ground, and sprang up and bare fruit and hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he, he cried, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And the disciples asked him, saying, What might this parable be? And he said, Unto you... It is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of 
God. But to others, but to others in parables, that seeing they might not see, and hearing they might not understand. Hmm. Seeing they wouldn't see, and, and hearing they wouldn't understand? Really? But to the disciples it was given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God? Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are they that hear. Then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. They on the rock are they which, when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no root. In other words, they have no root in themselves. And these have no root, which for a while believe, and in time of temptation fall away you know, persecution. Um, and that which fell among the thorns are they, which when they have heard, go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bear no fruit to perfection. In other words, the things of this world are more important to them than the things of God. But that on the good ground are they, which in an honest and good heart Having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. No man, when he hath lighted a candle, covereth, covereth it with a vessel, or putteth it under a bed, but sitteth it on a candlestick, that they which enter in may see the light. For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. Take heed, therefore, how ye hear, and whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken even that which he seemeth to have. So, I guess we could keep reading. Then came to him his mother and his brethren, and could not come at him for the press. In other words, the crowds were so great they couldn't get near him, right? And it was told him by certain which said, Thy mother and thy brethren stand without desiring to see thee. And he answered and said unto them, My mother and my brethren are these which hear the word of God and, and, and do it. My mother and my brethren are these which hear the word of God and do it. Hmm. And if you want to read Matthew 11:25, there's an alternate reading of this. In Luke 18, verse 7, And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? How about John chapter 10, starting in verse 14? Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. And know my sheep, and am known of mine. As a father knoweth me, even so I, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep, and other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Hmm. All right, how about John chapter 15, verse, uh, verse 19? If ye were of the world, the world would love his own, but because ye are not of the world. But I have chosen you, but I have chosen you, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Boy, that's a truth. You wouldn't believe all the hate stuff I get almost on a daily basis. Uh, John 17, 9. I pray for them, I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. How about this? John chapter 6 and verse 65. Oh, we got to read that one. And... <laughs> 
uh, 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 we got to read this. All right. Um, Now, well, let's go 64. Uh, let's see. I don't know where to start. John chapter 6, verse 63. It is a spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not, and who should betray him. From the beginning, Jesus knew who didn't believe and who would betray him. John 6, 65. And he said, Therefore said I unto you, that no man can come unto me, except it were given unto him of my Father. Can I read that again? Therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me. This is Jesus speaking, not Bob. Therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my Father. The way I read this, if God the Father doesn't give you, you know, if he doesn't give it, you know, if he doesn't give it you to Christ, that's it. You don't come. I, I don't know. Therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. Let's read John 6, 6, 6. John chapter 6, verse 66. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. John 6.66. 6, 6. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Interesting, I would say. Uh, let's see. John 17.9. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou, who, God the Father, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. Hmm. How about the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 46, 47? And they continued daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Acts 4, 27, 28, For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles, and the people of Israel are were gathered together for to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before, to be done. Acts 13, 48. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord, and as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. And as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. Hmm. Acts 22, 14. And he said, The God of our fathers hath chosen thee. Who? The God of our fathers hath chosen thee, that thou shouldest know his will and see that just one, and shouldest hear the voice of his mouth. How about Romans chapter 8, 29, 30, and verse 33? For whom he did foreknow, who's that? God the Father. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate. You ever heard of destiny? He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, 
that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. More so, moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them also, them, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. And of course, they want you to believe that the unbelieving people over in the Middle East that call themselves Jews are the elect. Well, let's read that again. John chapter 10, verse 23 through 29. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon, Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. You see, Jesus didn't do these works to glorify himself. He did these works in the Father's name. He raised the dead, healed the sick, cast out devils, took people that were crippled and brought them back to health. I mean, are these the works of God or are these the works of the devil? I told you, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. In Galatians 3.29, it says, And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. So, it doesn't say we become, it doesn't say spiritual seed, it says and if ye be Christ, then are ye, you could also say, then ye are, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs of the promise. What promise? The promise God made to Abraham. All right, let's go to Malachi chapter 1. We read it in part 1, but we're going to read it again because this ties right into the book of Romans that Paul wrote. Malachi chapter 1. Malachi is the last book of the Bible in the Old Testament, just before the Gospels, before the book of Matthew. Verse 1, Malachi 1.1. 1, 1. The burden of the Lord, I'm sorry, the burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother? saith the Lord, yet I loved Jacob, and I hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness, and I hated Esau. All right, so let's go to Romans chapter 9. We're starting in verse 6. Okay? So let's go to the book of Romans. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of interesting information in Romans, in the book of Romans, and uh, chapter 6. Let's take a look. All right. Romans chapter 6 and verse 1. I'm sorry, Romans chapter 9. Uh, let's see. 
All right, let's go to verse 1, and we'll read the whole chapter. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost, that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption, and the glory, and the covenants, and the giving of the law, and the service of God, and the promises. Whose are the fathers, and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came, who is over all, God bless forever. Amen. Not as though the word of God hath taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. See, Abraham had two sons. He had Ishmael by Hagar, the Egyptian woman. And then Sarah had a son whose name was Isaac. And yet, God said, In Isaac shall thy seed be called. Maybe we should go back and take a look at that. All right, let's go to Genesis 21, verse 1. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac, being eight days old, as God had commanded him. And Abraham was an hundred years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. And Sarah said, God hath made me laugh to laugh, so that all that hear will laugh with me. And she said, Who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah should be given children suck? For I have borne him a son in his old age. And the child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which she had borne unto Abraham, mocking. So Abraham had a, a, a son with Hagar. His name was Ishmael. And many, many, many of the Arabs claim descent from Ishmael. And God said, uh, you know, the, the Bible declares that Abraham loved his son Ishmael. And God even blessed Ishmael. But let's keep reading. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which she had borne unto Abraham, mocking. Wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son, because of Ishmael. And God said unto Abraham, let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad and because of thy bondwoman. In all that Sarah hath said unto thee, hearken, or listen, hearken unto her voice, for in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Not Ishmael. You see, that's why the, um, the Muslims say, oh, well, the Bible's wrong. See, God, God's covenant seed is Ishmael, but Right here in the book of Genesis, it says, Nope, in Isaac shall thy seed be called. And also of the son of the bondwoman, will I make a nation? Ah. And also of the son of the bondwoman, now this is God speaking. And also of the son of the bondwoman, will I make a nation because he is thy seed. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and took bread and a bottle of water and gave it unto Hagar, putting it on her shoulder and the child, and sent her away. And she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. And the water was spent in the bottle, and she cast the child under one of the shrubs and went off and sat down over against him a good way off, as it were a bowshot. For she said, Let me not see the death of the child. And she sat over against him and lift up her voice and wept. 
And God heard the voice of the lad, and the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven, and said unto her, What aileth thee, Hagar? Fear not, for God hath heard the voice of the lad where he is. Arise, lift up the lad, and hold him in thine hand, for I will make him a great nation. Hmm. And guess what? Bush and Obama and, and Trump are all bombing the children of Abraham here. The Muslims, the Arabs, they, you can argue and say, oh, well, Bob, you don't know what you're talking about, but arise, lift up the lad and hold him in thine hand, for I will make him a great nation. And God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water, and she went and filled the bottle with water and gave the lad drink. And God was with the lad, and he grew and dwelt in the wilderness and became an archer. And he dwelt in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother took him a wife out of the land of Egypt. Hmm. Okay. So, let's go back to Romans. Romans 9, 6. Not as though the word of God hath taken an effect, for they are not all Israel which are, is, uh, are which are of Israel. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. See, Isaac was to be the chosen seed. Ishmael was blessed of God, but he was not to be the chosen seed. Verse 8. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, Ishmael, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. For this is the word of promise. At this time will I come, and Sarah shall have a son. Hey, people, Sarah was 90 years old. How many 90 years old women do you know that give birth? Okay. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac. Ah, Isaac was the father of Esau. For the children, listen to this carefully. And think of Malachi 1, we just read. Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. Romans 9 and verse 11. For the children, being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God, according to election, might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. You see, Esau was the elder and Jacob was the younger. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. For he saith unto Mo Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth. What? So then it is not of him that willeth, whosoever when, whosoever will, right? So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, Even for the same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will he hardeneth. Didn't we read in part one that God hardened Pharaoh's heart? 19. Thou wilt say then unto me, Why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? Nay, but, O man, who art thou that repliest against God? 
Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Has not the power, has not the potter power over the clay? Of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor, and another unto dishonor? What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath? fitted to destruction, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he hath had afore prepared unto glory. Even us whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles, as he saith also in O.C. O.C. is the Greek rendering of of Hosea, H-O-S-E-A. It's one of the books near Malachi. And it shall come to pass, uh, and as he saith also in Osi, I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not beloved. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. Isaiah, that's Isaiah, Greek rendering. Isaiah also crieth concerning Israel, though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. And as Isaiah said before, Except the Lord of Sabaoth have left us a seed, we had been as Sodoma and been made like unto Gomorrah. What shall we say then? That the Gentiles which followed not after righteousness hath obtained to righteousness even the righteousness which is of faith? But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not attained to the law of righteousness. Righteousness. Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were, by the works of the law. For they stumbled at that stumbling stone, as it is written, Behold, I lay in Sion a stumbling stone and rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. So what is this stumbling stone and rock of offense? Well, let's take a look. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, starting in verse 1. Now remember something. Corinth was a city in Greece. So obviously, he's talking to Greeks here. And I'm sure there were some Jews living among the Greeks. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Remember when Israel under Moses crossed the Red Sea? Well, that's what they're talking about here. And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And he's talking about their fathers. So were the Corinthians with, with, with Moses? Were they baptized in the, you know, their descendants baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea? According to Paul, they were the Greeks. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. But with many of them God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Hmm, okay. So what was the rock of offense, the stumbling stone? Christ. As some of the Jews believe, but many of the Jews maybe most of them, they, they didn't believe. I mean, God, Jesus, 
through God the Father did so many miracles. And they wouldn't come to him. All right, so let's take a look at uh, Romans 11. Now, what was Romans? That, that was the Italians, right? I mean, let's face it, people. Paul's writing, you know, to, to, to people that are not considered what the modern church world would say Jews. Romans 11, verse 1. I say then, hath God cast away his people? Ooh. Why would he say that? Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 3, starting in verse 1. They say, if a man put away his wife, and she go from him and become another man's, shall he return unto her again? Shall not that land be greatly polluted? But thou hast played the harlot with many lovers. Yet return again to me, saith the Lord. Now, the Lord's talking about his people, Israel, here. You know, they went and polluted themselves with all the gods of the land that of Canaan that they hated. Moloch and, and Baal or Baal or and all this other satanic worship. But yet he says, Yet return again to me, saith the Lord. Lift up thine eyes unto the high places, and see where thou hast not been lying with, in the ways that thou sat for them, as the Arabian in the wilderness, and thou hast polluted the land with thy whoredoms and with thy wickedness. Wherefore the showers have been withholden, and there hath been no latter rain, and thou hast a whore's forehead, thou refusest to be ashamed. What's a whore's forehead? I have no idea. So don't ask me. Verse 4. Wilt thou not from this time cry unto me? My father, thou art the guide of my youth. Will he reserve his anger forever? Will he keep it to the end? Behold, thou hast spoken and done evil things as thou couldst. The Lord said also unto me in the days of Josiah the king. Now Josiah was a good king. He was probably the last good king in uh, Judah. Israel and Judah were divided kingdoms in this time period. Josiah was a great king. I look forward to meeting him one day. Guess what he did? He rid the land of the Satanists. He killed them. And he got rid of the Sodomites. And when I say he got rid of them, uh, he didn't just buy them a bus, a Greyhound bus ticket and tell them to go, you know, somewhere else. He didn't ship them off to San Francisco. He got rid of them. And the Lord was well pleased with him. The Lord said unto me in the days of Josiah the king, Hast thou seen that which backsliding Israel hath done? She has gone up upon every high mountain and under every green tree, and there has played the harlot. See, the witches love to play in the forest under the green trees, the sacred oaks, as they call it. And I said, after she had done all these things, Turn thou unto me. But she returned not, and her treacherous sister Judah saw it. And I saw, Jeremiah 3, 8, And I saw, when, for all the causes, whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. What? God divorced Israel? And when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. What's a harlot? A whore. And it came to pass through the lightness of her whoredom that she defiled the land and committed adultery with stones and with stocks. And yet for all this, her treacherous sister Judah hath not turned unto me with her whole heart, but feignedly, saith the Lord. And the Lord said unto me, The backsliding Israel hath justified herself more than treacherous Judah. What? 
Israel he divorced. But he says, the backsliding Israel hath justified herself more than treacherous Judah. Go and proclaim these words toward the north, that was Israel, and say, Return thou backsliding Israel, saith the Lord, and I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you, for I am merciful, saith the Lord, and I will not keep my anger forever. Only acknowledge thine iniquity. That's a good idea. Acknowledge your sin, people. Only acknowledge, acknowledge thine iniquity, that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God, and hast scattered thy ways to the strangers under every green tree, and ye have not obeyed my voice, saith the Lord. Turn, O backsliding ch children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you, and I will take you, one of a city and two of a family, and will bring you to Zion. And I will give you pastors, according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. And it shall come to pass, when ye be multiplied and increased in the land in those days, saith the Lord, they shall say no more, the ark of the covenant of the Lord, neither shall it come to mind, neither shall they remember it, neither shall they visit it, neither shall they shall that be done any more. At that time, they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord, and all the nations shall be gathered unto it to the name of the Lord to Jerusalem. Neither shall they walk any more after the imagination of their evil heart. In those days, the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of the land of the north to the land of that I have given for an inheritance unto your fathers. And they shall come together out of the land of the north. What land is north of Israel? Take a look on a map, people. It's Israel. And look north. Guess what's there? Europe. In those days the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, and they shall come together out of the land of the north. This is Jeremiah 3.18 to the land that I have given for an inheritance unto your fathers. But I said, How shall I put thee among the children, and give thee a pleasant land, a goodly heritage of the hosts of nations? And I said, Thou shalt call me my father, and shalt not turn away from me. Surely, as a wife treacherously departeth from her husband, so have ye dealt treacherously with me, O house of Israel, saith the Lord. A voice was heard upon the high places, weeping and supplications for the children of Israel, for they have perverted their way, and they have forgotten the Lord their God. Return, ye backsliding children, and I will heal your backslidings. Behold, we come unto thee, for thou art the Lord our God. Truly in vain is salvation hoped for from the hills and from the multitude of mountains. Truly in the Lord our God is the salvation of Israel. For shame hath devoured the labor of our fathers from our youth, their flocks and their herds, their sons and their daughters. We lie down in shame, and our confusion covereth us, for we have sinned against the Lord our God, we and our fathers, from our youth even unto this day, and have not obeyed the voice of the Lord our God. Hmm. Let's go back to Romans 11. I say then, hath God cast away his people? Didn't God, we read in Jeremiah 3, 8, how God divorced Israel, but not Judah? Oh, yeah. I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite, of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. God hath not cast away his people, whom he foreknew. What ye not, what the scripture saith of Esaias? How he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets, and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. Isaiah says, Elijah people. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Even so then, at this present time, also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. And if by grace, then is it no more of works Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then is it no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. And people, obedience, being obedient to the Lord, 
you know, to the commandments. That, that's not work. You know, that's not works. It's being obedient. Verse 7. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. According as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear, unto this day. Didn't we read this earlier? Didn't Jesus say, they asked him why did he speak in parables? Because he said, seeing they wouldn't see, and hearing they wouldn't understand. But unto you it was given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. According as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. And David saith, Let their table be made a snare, and a trap, and a stumbling block, and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see, and bow down their back alway. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. Now if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them, the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? For I speak to you Gentiles in as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. If by any means I pray provoke to emulation them which are my flesh and might save some of them. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? For if the first fruit, if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy, and if the root be holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou, being a wild olive tree, wert grafted in among them, and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree, boast not against the branches. But if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off, that I might be grafted in. Yeah, God divorced Israel. Well, because of unbelief they were broken off. And thou standest by faith, be not high-minded, but fear. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also spare not thee. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fell severity, but towards thee goodness. If thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shall be cut off. And they also, if they abide not, still in unbelief, shall be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. For if thou wert cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and wert grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Sion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant with them when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. Now I want to take a look real quick at Revelation chapter 3 and verse 9. These are the words of Christ. Jesus speaking, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan. The synagogue of Satan? Here's a verse you'll never read, words of Christ you'll never read in a, in a Zionist church. Behold, I will make of them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. 
Hmm. Okay. How about Revelation 2 9? Jesus speaking. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. See, people will try to make you think that Romans 11 is talking about the synagogue of Satan, which, no, I don't think so. Romans 11, 28. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. For as ye in times past have not believed God, yet have now yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief, even so have these also now not believed, that through your mercy they also may obtain mercy. For God hath concluded them all in unbelief, that he might have mercy upon all. O oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who, hath, for, for who hath known the mind of the Lord? Or who hath been his counselor? Or who hath first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again? For of him, and through him, and to him are all things to whom be glory forever. Amen. All right, let's take a look at uh, Colossians 1, 27 through 29. But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. Galatians 1.15 but it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb at birth and called me, called me by his grace. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 5 and then 11. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Christ, Jesus Christ to him self according to the good pleasure of his will in whom also we have obtained an inheritance being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Ephesians 3.11 According to the eternal purpose which he hath purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Colossians 3 and verse 12 Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. 1 Thessalonians 1 and verse 4. Knowing, brethren, beloved, your election of God. 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 9. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Thessalonians 2.13. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning, God hath from the beginning chosen you, to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. 2 Timothy 2.10 Therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Jesus Christ with eternal glory. Titus 1.1 Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth which is after godliness. 1 Peter 1, 1 and verse 2. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ to the strangers, divorced Israel people, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontius, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bith Bithynia, elect, 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 according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. First Peter 2, 9. Ooh. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you, called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. First Peter 5 and verse 13. The church that is at Babylon, elected together with you, saluteth you, and also doth 
Marcus, my son. Second Peter 1 and verse 10. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure, for if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. Isn't that interesting? All right, well, I, what can I tell you? Um, one more thing. Uh, remember, God says many are called, but few are chosen. I wonder if you've got to be one of God's elect and then answer the call. I mean, let's face it. When Paul, you know, Paul was called of the Lord, struck with blindness, he was obedient to the Lord. Mary was obedient to the Lord. Elizabeth was obedient to the Lord. Peter, Matthew, Mark, Luke, James, John, they were all called of the Lord, and they were obedient, and they, and they answered the call. I mean, I suppose they could have said, oh, pfft, I, I'm not listening to you, you know, but they answered the call. So, whosoever will, or is it whosoever will of God's elect? You know, I, yeah, I know you can read verses about whosoever will and say, well, see, Bob's, Bob's one of those Calvinists, but I don't know what John Calvin really taught. I've read almost nothing in his works. I'm just reading the Bible. I'm not quoting John Calvin, am I? No. So, all right, well, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.